My name is Sergeant Trevor Tache, New Mexico Army National Guard, 919th Military Police Company, Albuquerque, New Mexico. The process to become a guardsman um, starts off at your local recruiting office. Went in, uh, you know, not really knowing what to expect. Uh, I was looking for a little bit of help to basically pay for college. And, you know, I heard that the National Guard had tuition reimbursement and the GI Bill, so I thought that was a good place to start. That I'll support and defend. That I'll support and defend. The minimum qualifications for an applicant to actually enlist with the National Guard obviously would be between the ages of 17 to 34, have a high school diploma or equivalent, um, be able to pass a physical test, and it's not push-ups and sit-ups and how fast you can run. It's an actual, just like a sports physical where they check your eyes, ears, nose, throat, all that good stuff. Congratulations and welcome That's to the team. You they want to make sure you're in good enough physical condition to at least make it through basic training. And then with all your health records, they want to make sure you know you don't have any heart problems, any mental problems. After that's complete, and if, as long as they meet all the qual general qualifications, um, first thing I have them do is a practice, back, uh, practice ASVAB. Um, it's a short test, it gives us a general idea of where somebody would score. It consists of engineering questions, math, a little bit of science, a um, little bit of English. It's just an overall aptitude test, um, seeing where you're going to rank among the Army standards. Each job that the military has what we call MOS, which is a military occupational specialty, um, each MOS has a certain requirement as far as line scores. So the ASVAB is broken down into individualized scores and so once we have somebody that has a 31 or above then we can sit down and talk about let's see what jobs you qualify for based on your line scores. I'm 31 Bravo which is a military police officer and as a military police officer you know when we go through training we go through basic law and order classes, police training, uh, DUI, any, any basic type of training that a normal civilian police officer would do we do as well. A lot of MPs in the National Guard are police officers in their civilian life, so they can transfer that you know, back and forth very easily, um, and it, it helps out a lot. Some of the basic benefits that everybody's gonna walk away with or obtain when they're in the National Guard, every soldier is entitled to tuition assistance, um, which, is, which pays 100% of your tuition, as well as anybody who signs a six-year contract, which our contracts are either three years or six years of active status, anybody who signs a six-year contract is going to get your Montgomery GI Bill. Benefits also include free $400,000 life insurance policy, as well as all your medical benefits, dental, vision, military discounts everywhere you go, free, free National Guard license plate with free registration for the life uh, that you're in the National Guard. Um, like I said, military discounts everywhere. I didn't realize what I was getting into at the time. Um, and then, you know, just being in the Army for as long as I have and, you know, coming to accept the commitment, accept the duty and the responsibility, I finally realized how big of a step that was. And it's definitely one of the one of the better, if not the best commitment I've definitely made. Now, primarily, if you learn or you're being taught how to how to uh, set yourself on 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 this particular weapon, the tip of your nose should make contact with the charging handle. Why? Because it's a, it's the, going to be the same place every time you fire. The closer you are to the front sight, is going to be better for you. Go ahead and lock and load your weapon. Switch your safety levers from safe to semi. Scan your lane. Lane 9, you have met the standard. The EST qualifications allows us to get more range time without actually having to be at the range. It is a basically a virtual simulator, which allows us again to save money on ammunition and travel expenses um, that would otherwise be very costly. But here in Santa Fe, it allows us to again get that uh, extra range time that we would, we wouldn't normally get. Anytime you get to fire a weapon is always a good time, no matter what you're doing. Whether it's a 240 Bravo machine, fully automatic machine gun, or whether it's just a regular M4 rifle, um, anytime you can get a little bit of trigger time, it's it's always always good training. This is a 249 fully automatic machine gun. It fires a 5.562 millimeter round from either a belt or a magazine. Fully automatic. It is belt-fed, air-cooled, gas-regulated. 
and is accurate up to a thousand meters on an area target and 800 meters on a point target. It can be fired from the shoulder, the hip, or mounted on a turret uh, of a Humvee. Very powerful weapon, uh, very fun weapon to shoot though. I've been part of the National Guard for just a little over three and a half years now. I enlisted in February of 2012 and went to basic in July of 2012. Eight years is kind of the general uh, starting point for a National Guardsman. Um, it's going to be six years of active duty guard training, which is, you know, you're one week in the month, you're two weeks out of the year, uh, deployments if you go on deployment, or, you know, the general emergency help such as floods, fires, so on and so forth. And then two years after that, uh, you don't report to drill every month. You don't go to AT every year. If they need you, then they'll call you. So it's just a armor, or excuse me, an armored support vehicle uh, used for transportation and overall, say, uh, security protection. It has the 50 caliber and the Mark 19 mounts um, shot out of this bad boy right here. You have two drivers, a gunner, and then a team commander as well. And this is fun to drive. All of my uh, ideals and values I get from my parents. They did their best uh, all throughout their life to make sure that my, my two brothers and I did the best we possibly could. They told us always to be truthful, always to uh, be the best person that you possibly can be. My parents definitely instilled a work ethic uh, for my brothers and I. That was one of the things that they really wanted to make prevalent, is that we are hard workers and that we're not just going by the wayside. Big top, big top, hold it, heck yeah. Everything's all set up, good to go. So this is kind of my domain. I'm in charge of the bar, ordering, scheduling. I've got one of the best crews in Albuquerque. Oh, so 25 minutes, got it. Cool, awesome, we'll get her done. Okay. In my experience in hiring guardsmen, we've had great success. It's going to be a good day. What Trevor brings to us as a guardsman and what I've had the opportunity to, to see over a period of time is, is a young man that's um, you know, taken on responsibility here in conjunction with taking on responsibilities with the guard. The feature tonight is going to be the swordfish and shrimp, one of the other new additions that we've got on our menu. Um, fantastic dish, guys, char-grilled swordfish. I love my job. I get to be in the kitchen and be with a good group of guys who work their butts off every day. Lunch grill, lunch salmon herd. We put out some of the best food that you'll find anywhere. Woo! That grill is hot today. As I give him more assignments, he's able to do a better job. He has confidence in what he's doing. I have more confidence in him. Uh, chicken's ready, well done. He's learning and understanding how to be a leader in real time, in the real world. Oh. It's nice to be part of that teamwork, that camaraderie in the civilian side and have that much pride in what you do at a restaurant. Um, and it's, it's definitely a great place to work. The promotion ceremony, uh, it was a great accomplishment. I felt that I had finally attained something that is worthwhile. State of New Mexico, Department of Military Affairs, Military Division, Santa Fe, New Mexico, dated 31 July 2015. It was a great day. Um, I had my family there to support me. My sister-in-law, who uh, was a sergeant in the reserves, she was the one to pin me, so that held great meaning for me as well. Potential for increased responsibility. He is therefore promoted to sergeant with a date of rank of 28 July 2015 by order of the Adjutant General of New Mexico, signed Milo W. Moody, Colonel G.S. Adjutant. Give me a hand. Seeing where this young man has come from, you know, it's a, it's really a neat thing to uh, to to really experience and and, and enjoy. Um, little family history. My father was also a sergeant in this, not this unit, but uh, the the legacy of the Mexico National Guard. Attention, attention! Hit the fight! Fall out! 
This is a really nice day for him. He's worked really hard to get here, and I'm really, I'm really pleased and really proud of Absolutely. him. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He wanted to finish getting his degree monetarily. The Guard helped him do that, and so he was able to finish his education And when he joined the Guard, and he got his degree. And, um, you know, I think there was a lot of different reasons why, but I think he's really glad he did. Congratulations, Bill. Thanks, Art. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> One, two, three. Today is it's almost a new beginning. You know, I'm taking a new step in, a, in the right direction. Um, gaining more leadership abilities, and from here that the sky's the limit. My grandfather was a staff sergeant in World War II, part of the Bataan Death March, and just becoming a part of the NCO Corps uh, like he was is a very proud moment for me, um, just to say that I can step in the same shoes that he did. My grandfather's name was Wendell and Tiche. He was a corporal when he first enlisted with the 515th Coastal Artillery out of New Mexico. Um, he was a prisoner of war in the Bataan Death March, was held in captivity for oh, just a little about a year, um, and thankfully came home once the war was over. Very influential man, very loving man, and definitely one of the biggest reasons that I joined the New Mexico National Guard, and still to this day provides all of the inspiration I need to continue to do my best. The preparation for the APFT for myself is just trying to get in the right mindset. Um, I try to go to the gym as much as I possibly can, um, you know, keep myself physically fit. Um, every now and then doing push-ups and sit-ups after I get home from work at the end of the day. Um, doing all the little things that I can uh, to make sure that I'm always staying that one step ahead. My best score was actually the last time we did the APFT. Um, I scored, I think it was a 277. It wasn't quite there yet, so we're, every, every time we're trying to get a little bit better. Five, four, three, two, one. The Brotherhood and Sisterhood is, it's a very tight-knit group. Whenever you get to your unit or you get to your duty station, uh, you are accepted right away. You have to be because you're all a team, you're all a family. Um, it's a very, very cohesive group, and you, it's, again, one big family. I'm a part of a family that's, you know, a million, a million strong almost, um, and it's, it's great to have that type of family to have your back. Start! Being in for the time that I have has made me appreciate and realize what the military is, and whenever you take everything away, the thing that I think drives me is just the duty. I mean, it's what I have to do, it's what I signed on to do, and it's what I'm very happy doing. If you are thinking about the military as just temporary for, you know, four years active duty or just a one-term guard, or if you're looking to make a career out of it, definitely do your research. Uh, if it's something that you really want to do, uh, talk with people who are in the service, talk with a recruiter. If you want to be part of something bigger, if you want to achieve and do things that you would never think you could possibly do, absolutely, go for it. The military is a great experience, and I, I wouldn't trade any of it for anything. And I plan on continuing my military career for a long time. Uh, so for philosophical or just words of wisdom, uh, I would definitely just say, uh, if it is something you want to do, then go for it. Go